Hey everybody, welcome back to the 2017 iCast show. This is Bash University Live. I'm Pete Kluzek, and uh, boy, we just keep getting some amazing guests, and I'm really excited uh, about the people that I have with me on the show right now because uh, they're doing something really, really special in the industry, and they're crushing it by dominating... Uh, the best in show lure category for four years in a row. And this is Mass from Savage Lures. Welcome to the show. I appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. And, uh, and over on the far side, uh, some of you who know me might know him. This is Travis Klein, pro staff member for Savage Lures, uh, a.k.a. The Closer, <laughs> is, is with us here this afternoon. And I appreciate both of <laughs> you guys being here with us today. And... Um, you know, it's uh, we were having a little, little discussion, Mass, about about what you guys are doing and, and how you're doing it. Now, I want these guys to know, but but four years in a row here at the ICAST show, it, it, it's got to be a record. I mean, it's very, very impressive what you've been able to do. Well, first of all, we're very thankful that we get the opportunity here, and we've been welcomed by the American anglers in a really great way. Um, and what we try to do is, is to make fishing fun. Right. Uh, we try to make some unique products that will get people's attention, but that will also get the job done. Right. Well, it, and we've seen that now. Uh, we what? Let, let's let's go over the uh, the list. Right. It was uh, four years ago. It was the 3D crab. So the we 3D crab. We made a crab, um, perfectly realistic scan of a real crab. It had the fluttering motion right. on the drop. Uh, then we did uh, that. W the shrimp. Yeah. Then that we did the hard shrimp with the TPE leg. So yeah. it was actually a sinking topwater lure that you could drop in the potholes. Perfect for redfish and many other species. Okay. And then last year, we, we decided to go into the freshwater uh, area, and we, we made the suicide duck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it was awesome. It won it was, again. It was, a, uh, it was a really a crazy creation. It was like a bus, a bus bait, but with two spinning feet. Right. Uh, and actually based uh, on the scan of a real duckling. And that was quite a challenge to, to get that done. I'm sure. Yeah. And this year, uh, Travis, if you could you get help us out. We have the winner. Uh, if we could showcase that uh, right over there in the close-up lens. Uh, what is this? Well, we have um, our YouTube channel. Um, we get a lot of people posting and writing comments on our different videos on the Savage mm -hmm. Gear channel. And... Uh, a lot of people after last year's success with the suicide duck, they asked us to do a crawler. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing new to make a crawler. There's tons of crawlers out there. But to make a realistic crawler uh, based on a real scan of a prey, I just thought the bat was perfect. <laughs> um, Amazing idea. Why, yeah. why would you think of... Now, I, see, I would never think the bat would be a perfect top water. <laughs> well, if you think about it, um, have you ever seen a bat swim? No. So, so it actually crawls. It, it has this yep. frenzy, panicking action and sends out a lot of okay. vibration. And when I saw that a bat in the swimming pool, I just thought, that's got to be it. The, the iconic shape of the wings mm -hmm. and everything, it just screamed top water bait. So yeah. you actually saw one in we, the water. We saw one in the water, and I thought, that's got to be it right Amazing. There. Yeah. yeah. And um, if, if, you look at, if you look at this lure here, this, this is the medium size. Then there's a small size and a bigger size. Okay. So it's not only bass. You're also going to target, you know, bigger predator fish like pike and muskie, uh, this type of thing. Um, and it just crawls. It, it, it makes this great sound and crawls through the water. Right. It, you know, there's a fun story to tell. It's, it's amazing when you look at what he saw and he envisioned that they actually duplicated what you can imagine that fleeing crawling on the top of the water is they actually duplicated that it's it's really something else and, and check out the youtube videos oh well definitely will i know everybody watching will definitely do that but you said there's a story behind the bat well the story is of course uh everybody knows that a, a bat is kind of scary creepy it's an yeah. iconic <laughs> animal All right um but i don't think the bass will attack it because they think it's a bat that might be a blackbird or that might be any other creature that has fallen in the water. Um, but I think most people associate the bat with Batman and with that whole <laughs> era, you know, being fun. And in my opinion, you know, fishing is also about fun. It's about creating new anglers. Right. Uh, so to tell that story with a bat, I think it's, it's perfect. It's got to get a lot of attention. Well, it, it certainly has. It's, it's one best in show. And, uh, you know, bass like... 
pretty much all predators, right? They're opportunistic. That's right. right? Yeah. So whether or not they ID that as a bat or a frog or a rat or a blackbird, yeah. uh, you know, they're, they're going to see it struggling, and they're going to try to take advantage of that exactly. situation and, and get them. Now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm impressed because of what you guys are doing. Uh, the way you describe it is, is fun, right? Fishing is yeah. fun. That's, Fishing's that's fun. why we all – my dad took me fishing when I was four years old, and it was a gift. Yeah, that he gave to me, and uh, and I and I try to give that to as many people a, as I can, and, and take them fishing, and uh, and you creating something so fun uh, is keeps people fishing, gets people excited about fishing. I think that's great. Yep. And and I wanna um, I wanna invite some guys, uh, everybody, to take the pledge of the to take somebody new fishing, and this comes from the yeah. National Hunting and Fishing Day. And are you guys associated with that program? I'm actually not sure. I, I we, don't we think so be. at the moment. Okay. We're not. But, well, well we, had, we had a guest here from National Hunting and Fishing uh, Program, and it's a pledge that you can go and take this pledge that you're going to take somebody new fishing. They don't have to be a kid. They could be a neighbor. They could be whoever, but somebody that's not been fishing before. And you can take this pledge at nhfday.org. That's National Hunting and Fishing Day, nhfday.org. And I invite everybody to take the pledge, take someone great fishing. Idea. Yeah, it is a great idea. Yeah, let's get let's get these people out there fishing. Uh, the National Hunting and Fishing Days actually takes place uh, on September 23rd, and 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 it just invites everybody to just get out there and participate. Yeah, especially if you take them with something as as fun as this is to fish. Yeah, and and how like these are fun. I mean, right? You, like we talked about, you got stories behind all this well, stuff. That, but that's where do you? Where, I mean, you sit around and you're thinking, duck lure. You yeah. know, I mean, where where does the inspiration come? How how do you get these great well, ideas? If you think back, when I was a kid, I come from Denmark, um, a small country in, in Europe, and and pike fishing is really big. And every spring, we would see the small ducklings being eaten by pike. Wow. So that was like a little bit like this scary fairy tale that a little duckling would never make it across the lake because it would be eaten. Mm -hmm. So I've always known that the little duckling imitation would be a great pike bait. That's why we made the suicide duck. <laughs> so we're growing now in, in, in America, and it's really a great ride to be part of all the bass fishing. And, and I just realized that if we make a hollow body duckling, a perfect one, right. actually what you call a frog lure. Right. And, and so, so, popular. so that's where we had the idea, the crazy idea. What do you get when you pair a frock and a duck? You get a frock. You get a frock. Pete passes. So he passed the and, test. And then, again, thinking about the young people, and I just realized, okay, we're going to, what the frock? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what the frock? Let's do it. Yeah. Well, look how it came out. And that, that just exploded, you know. Yeah. The amount of interest we've had on this show for this new, yeah. new, new lure here is just crazy. And it, yeah. the little size here, perfect for snakehead and bass. Yep. Bigger profile bait with a little weight, mm -hmm. super for skip casting. Right. And I'm very inspired about the American bass fishing tradition, the way that you fish, all the very technical ways that mm -hmm. you're fishing. And i got to say, and skip casting, this thing is just so much fun. I, I, it certainly is. I mean, this is a shape and a design that we've been using to win tournaments for years. Uh, but it, it's, it, well, I say a shape, but this is a brand new shape. This is a brand new profile that the fish are going to be seeing right. for the first time. Yep. And it's in a size that is is very, uh, man, it, it's high percentage uh, profile and size yep. for what we do, you know, as, as far as basketball. I mean, we love to use the big stuff too and these really big giant lures because there's a time and a place for the really, really big stuff. Uh, but it's it's nice to see some of these smaller sizes Definitely. available to us. Th and that's the way we're going to go. I mean, we're known, we're known at Savage Gear for making lures with an attitude. <laughs> you know, crazy lures. You know, right. we got a 16-inch swim bait. Who has a 16-inch swim bait? You guys were, like, doing that before a lot of companies. Yeah. With well, the line-through system of those big swim baits, we really opened yep. a big market for, for the pike fishing. And, and we saw that the big trend in America, and I was really booming. Right. With the line-through trout. So that's yep. great. Yeah. we uh, And swim bait fishing is... Uh, you know, it's never been more popular. That's right. right. But we are looking mm -hmm. a little bit more, you know, going into the smaller stuff, you know, to try to engage with the bass anglers and, mm -hmm. and get into that. So it's very interesting. It, it is. Now, now, you got these great ideas, right? 
how, how do you, I mean, how do you go about, hey, I want to create a duck to creating a perfect duck image, suicide duck? That's oh, a you, great question. How, how, great do you, question. how do you do that? Well, it takes a lot of work. Um, if you really want to get the details 100%, you got to spend a long time. Mm -hmm. um, 3D scanning, of course, is, is, is one of the number one okay. things that, that we use. Uh, still do a lot of hand carving. In the case of uh, like a tube bait, you have so many tubes on the market. Great tubes for smallmouth fishing, mm -hmm. uh, also skipping for looks large like mouth. It looks like a goby exactly. to me. Exactly. <laughs> so that idea just came up. We, we scanned a, a goby. The goby is really dominating right now. Prey fish in a lot of the Scandinavian brackish areas. They're all over the place. We thought it was obvious to make a 3D scan. So when our sales reps here saw it, they said, oh my God, mm -hmm. let's get that lure as, as a smallmouth bait. Right, and that's that's how we combined the the tube with the with the goby scan, mm -hmm. and there you have it. And right now, that's this is the talk of the town right now on all the smallmouths. Well, so the 3D goby tube. Yeah, we have gobies here. Yeah, I think they came from you guys. I think they came with a ba <laughs> the ballast water or something. Yeah, some of the bigger ships, and they spread down the St. Lawrence well, River. That, that's certainly the way that they think it happened. And, right, uh, and it's it's interesting to see and and. Uh, do you over in Europe? Do you do you guys struggle with invasive species over there? Yeah, I think this is one of the species that actually is a bit of a problem um, because they eat a lot of the other prey fish. But in general, most of the invasive species they kind of adapt. We yeah. like your largemouth bass is not a European species, but we have it in certain lakes. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's not a, a, a massive problem actually. Uh, in this case here with a goby. It's they a good problem back here. Yeah, in a lot but of they get eaten, as you saw. A lot of fisheries yeah. is based on invasive species. Right. And uh, the prey fisher is just going to make our sander, our perch. That's our the sander is our walleye. Okay. Our perch and our pike and our trout are just going to feast on these. Right. And that that's what our smallmouth are doing, and we've seen them uh, get into Lake Erie, and they you go from you know catching four pounders to catching six pounders. They get big, and it's happening at Thousand Islands. Uh, Right now, the gobies have infiltrated over there, infiltrated Lake Oneida, right. where we just had a Bassmaster open, and uh, and the, the bass just keep getting bigger and bigger yep. and bigger. It's pretty interesting to see. And um, we also, uh, we have another invasive species. We have a snakehead. Yeah. And that. Very interesting. Yeah. And the peacock bass. I just came from Miami now and caught my first peacock okay. bass. Yeah, it's well, really. That had to be a lot of fun. It, but that's a, well, that's an amazing fish on the little yeah. frog here. Um, oh, yeah? yeah, and, and uh, I had a giant snakehead also on this one. Unfortunately, it came off. But okay. th those two fish are really, you know, powerful, fast mm -hmm. uh, fish that, that live in cover. And, and just the way that they react is great addition Ferocious. to what Great addition to what you already have. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're, we're all, we were very worried because especially up in the Chesapeake where I live, uh, a little bit north of here, and uh, the, when the snakeheads uh, got into our waterways we started seeing them really do well they mm -hmm. started expanding tremendously and we didn't know what was going to happen to the bass population uh you know we thought that was a possible threat and what was going to happen but what we're seeing like places like the potomac river right in uh washington dc uh the bass population is almost at its peak living in so they find some kind of balance they found some kind of balance so a few casts after i had that big snake head on i caught a real nice bass right so so that <laughs> the, the mix up of those three species on top water lures is hard to beat <laughs> that that certainly is it's like uh you know the 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 what is it the triple crown right <laughs> right fishing. yeah right you got you got them all but uh urban fishing triple crown yeah, urban fishing triple <laughs> crown that's pretty pretty amazing and the snakeheads are getting so big but oh. the there's Crazy. actually people in, up there now that that's what they target exclusively. Yep. They've expanded so much. Yeah, we just, is that right? We just met yeah. these young people, and then I thought, what are you fishing for bass? No, snakehead. <laughs> okay, but there's good bass, and yes, snakehead. <laughs> 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 Might be a good new tournament format. Hey, it, hey it's, <laughs> definitely, it's definitely coming. But Savage Gear, um, well, we're talking about lures. I, I guess there's a couple things I want to ask you. Number one, uh, so that... You know, the rest of the companies here can pirate you. What's next year's lure going to be? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's <laughs> top secret, Pete. Top secret. Top secret, Pete. Do you want no, to share to, anything? Well, you, anything you, you're to, to be honest, I think competition is very healthy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mm -hmm. like when people rip each other off and copy each other one-to-one yeah. -one or take parts, like just one-to-one. -one. Yeah. But I understand that without competition, we wouldn't evolve. Mm -hmm. And I would rather have another competitor, uh, you know, 
instead of not having that because that's what drives us that's what drives the industry absolutely does yeah are you planning for next year already uh, yeah i tell you we have so many things going on right now um savage gear has expanded okay. so i think i believe we're in about 40 countries now wow worldwide and australia is really big for us we're in japan and we're in all the european uh, countries and we're looking down south america now and we have uh, canon on board wow um so a lot of the inspiration from that globalization is, is of course, going to influence our product development. Uh, but Bass is definitely on the list right now. Well, we're certainly Bass heads on this broadcast. Yeah. All, of our, <laughs> all of our guys chase uh, largemouth and smallmouth from coast to coast. But Savage Gear doesn't only uh, produce lures. You, you have... Yeah, we, um, fishing rods is pretty big for us in, okay. uh, in the rest of uh, the territories, and we haven't had any fishing rods in America. So this year we tried to make our first little range, okay. the new 1DFR technology. Um, so it's very, very durable rods, but extremely lightweight. So they're perfect for competition fishing or for swinging bass on the boat. You, don't, you can't break the tips. You can basically just lift the rods in the tip. All right. Well, and he's not kidding. When I first saw the, the, the demo of this earlier this week, they literally grabbed that, that rod and picked it up between the tip top and the second guide down and picked it up. Wow. And that's how they handled, handed me the rod. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Are you? It's amazing. No, no problem. Well, I mean, that, that's a – well, let me ask you this. What, what type of price point are your rods selling for? Oh, that's, that's a good question. Um, this is completely new for us, the, the yeah. bass market. So we just wanted to bring out one range, and we think that, you know, the under $100 – Right. So around seventy-nine dollars up to one hundred and twenty-nine, covering everything from finesse, the spinning reels, up to frogs, bait caster, and then a few swim bait rods at the top of that. Excellent. So the new browser range with the one DFR technology is, is a first this year. Okay. So well, we'll th that's excellent. It seems like, and I love this about your company. It's all. It's at a price point that lets people get involved. Yeah. And, and products that are fun that that make people want to get involved. Uh, that's that's really a uh, high compliment to you and what Savage Gear is doing. Really appreciate it, and that's exactly our goal, is, is to engage more people in fishing. Oh. Um, we also want something that people can aspire to, you know, something, you know, really elite. Mm -hmm. But I think the main and the most important thing for our customers is to get something fun, innovative, to fish with at an affordable price. Well, uh, you've certainly done that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the rods, I actually really, one of the first things I thought of when this happens and, you know, actually made me think of you, you know, being a guide, a lot, of, a lot of guys are out there and they have to worry about, you know, clients grabbing a rod tip and the durability, lightweight, <laughs> sensitivity, it's amazing what that product, my, my rods I'm really get, impressed. My rods get stepped on. Exactly. They get crunched inside rod lockers, turned into pretzels. Yeah. Uh, so I, I certainly appreciate the durability aspect of the fishing. Yeah, and industry. I think the guides are really going to turn on I me. Mean, the grassroots development is going to be right there when people are like, wow, I can take this out. And, yep. and it's, it's not, it, it's not going to be something that's very easily destructed. Well, I, I, yeah. I look forward to seeing them. I'm actually going to be into the show, and, I'll, and I'm, I'd we love would to love stop to by. Give you, if you come yeah. by our Savage Gear booth, we have a big tank there. You can test the lures, and we can show yeah. you the rods and everything. Okay. Well, you know, while we're all here together, you know, maybe we can come up with next year's cicada fly yeah. buzz bait. Yeah. <laughs> so the cicada, the cicada top water is already done. It's already done. It's already the 3D cicada is, is on the way to Australia right now, so it's you, already. You already have. Yeah, that, that idea. one. That one's done. So I think for for the American market, we we have to uh, listen a lot to our grassroots. You already mentioned many yeah. things to me right now, so yeah. that, that's very interesting. <laughs> um, and uh, I think we're going to come up with something pretty cool next year. Yeah, well, I, I can't wait to see what it is. And uh, and I, I want to mention that, you know, because this is what we're talking about, and this is what Savage Bait is all about, and uh, what the Bass University is all about, and what we want to see. We want to invite everybody to go ahead and take the challenge at NHF. Day.org, nhfday.org, and take the challenge to take somebody new fishing. Get them great out idea. on the water and expose yeah. them to this great sport that we all love. Uh, like I thought, my dad took me when I was four years old. I was lucky that I had a dad that knew how to fish or wanted to fish, and he took me. 
a lot of people out there don't have moms and dads that are involved in fishing. Yeah. You know, and this is why we want to take the pledge so that, you know, maybe somebody will take that person fishing and change their lives like it changed ours. Yeah, that's right. right. It certainly did. It certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly got us out of trouble, didn't it? it what, you know, it definitely got us out of trouble. Yeah. It's a, this sport is awesome that way. It's all consuming. Yep. And it's very passionate. And once you go down that road of fishing, you, you really are focused on that and you don't get in trouble. That's right. Interesting uh, story about that. One of my good friends is a police officer, and he was for 30 years, and he never arrested anybody that possessed a fishing license. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. <laughs> that's, that's Are you really kidding? Incredible. <laughs> that's really something. It says a lot about yep. about the sport. It's a, it's a really great thing. Wow, what a great and, statistic. And we need to protect our sport. And I want to also invite and bring to everybody's attention that's watching and thank the Keep America Fishing people for bringing us here in this conservation alley uh, and talk about the pitch campaign. Are you guys familiar with the pitch campaign? I'm not. I'm well, not. let's talk about it right. What it is is we want to, it's talking about soft plastic lures and we want to inspire everybody to not throw those lures in the water. We want you to pitch it yeah. in a trash receptacle or recycling bin. And a lot of our tournaments are have recycling bins for the soft plastics and, and they're able to turn those back into lures again but we want to keep all that stuff out of our waterways yeah uh it's all about the conservation of our natural resources and and that's why we're on this hallway down that's here. a great campaign it's a good idea there. yeah, yeah. I, I think it's amazing and we have to continue to do that there's a lot of great players out there in the world today that uh, a lot of clubs bass fishing clubs that do lake cleanup projects yeah uh and they do all these types of things we have the catch and release program which was started by bass so many years ago which has helped our fisheries uh, explode yeah and 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 that's that's pretty exciting and I, and i don't know how things are over in europe but right now because of catch and release and because of some of these great environmental causes that we have here we have lakes that are in their they the best they've ever yep. been they're we're catching records we're getting we're seeing size limits explode uh yeah, cat, catch and release is, is the way forward and mm -hmm. savage gear has always been a big advocate for catch and release so that's how we educate everybody is is, is to actually catch and release excellent yeah even with the pike is there yep. is is there still a lot of meat hunters uh, in europe actually like it, it's all changed um yeah. you know the modern lure fishing for pike has really exploded over the yeah. last decade um, and we're there are several good players and some great brands in in europe that promote the sport and all of them promote catch and release and we can see that our pike population of course, it also has to do with the environment policy being more strict and more the water is getting better and better. Mm -hmm. But in general, I would say our, our predator fishing hasn't been better ever. That, see, and that's, that's just amazing. And, and that's a testament to all these things that we're doing and we got to keep doing it. And all the more reason why we got to get other people involved in our sport. And, and let me say that coming to America and seeing the way that you are a game in wildlife and, and all of these different um, things that you have done uh, to preserve it is, is really amazing and, and fishing in America is really outstanding. Well, I appreciate that. That's uh, I, I'd always love to go. I got invited to bass fish in Spain a couple times and I was unable to do it. <laughs> right. do this, this year, I, I'm, I'm, uh, so I've never been over to Europe. Uh, but at, we at the Bass University, we're going to Mexico this year. Have you have, have you taken Savage Gear down to Mexico? Yeah, I, I wasn't in uh, Cabo San Lucas this uh, this winter and, and and fished down there with saltwater though. But uh, also yes. amazing fisheries, and I, I saw the pictures and all that about the big bass. So it's definitely on the bucket list. Yeah, well, we're going to Anglers in uh, Lake El Salto. We actually have a Bass University week, uh, November sixth through the tenth. That uh, we still have openings. If you guys want to come down and join me and Mike Iconelli, we're going to be uh, we're going to be fishing down there for giant El wow. Salto bass. Well, uh, I would love to go there. Maybe we can develop a little lure for that. That that would be <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. Why don't I, we do I, a Mexican swim bait special? Uh, I'd love that. That would be. There's got to be some little rodents that we are, can find something. I'm you sure. know, Mexican <laughs> yeah. rodent that, that we can put a prop on or something. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I look forward to that and. Uh, and uh, I, I'm glad you were able to make the time to come over and talk to really us. Really appreciate yeah. having us on the show. Now, uh, what I want to just, um, can people get these at Tackle Warehouse? Is the new bat lure available? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think already, um, we're actually shipping already now to the to the big uh, stores here. Okay. So I know that Dick's Sporting Goods was was uh, one of the first ones to sign up on the, on the bat. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, already from this coming week, 
Okay. That you can actually go in and get the bat, and you could pre-order the the frock. So the the frock and the bat you can get. The the 3D Gobi is uh, already in Tackle Warehouse, and of okay. course Tackle Warehouse is also going to carry the all of the rest of the new products. Okay. They have a great lineup at Tackle Warehouse too, of the big swim baits and stuff. And other than that, I can say Dick Sporting Goods, and Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's. All the big boys are supporting us. Well, that that's amazing. And, uh, of course, we work with Tackle Warehouse and the Bash University Tackle Shop. You can go there and you can find all this stuff. If it's not available yet, I promise you it will be available immediately as soon as, they, as soon as you guys can get it to us. And I know that Tackle Warehouse, um, there are some, some great guys working there that I, I speak with a lot. And uh, they help me with the new rod range also. So okay. I know that they are going to take on the rod range as a pre-order. Uh, for the new season, so Excellent. that's a good place to look up what yeah. we do with the browser range. They're not all that great, guys. Corey over there at Tackle <laughs> Warehouse uh, can be troublesome, and uh, he knows what I'm talking about. I took Corey fishing on the Chesapeake, okay, and we were fishing topwater uh, lures like uh, with tre treble hooks, spook, you know, walk the dog type baits, and that's way we could catch them. Right, so you had to make these long casts as as far as you could cast them. Uh, in that real shallow, clear water to get the fish to bite. And so we're, he's coming out of his shoes on every cast trying to get that <laughs> lure out there, you know. And, uh, and That's I'm, a good visual. And I'm standing next to him, and there's the other guy, other guy in the back, and he, he goes and he winds up and he lays that spook up the side of my head as hard oh, as he can do it. No. <laughs> and, and it sent me to the canvas. And as I moved my head, I could feel the lure dangling from the oh, side of the head because no. the treble hooks were buried oh, right up no. into, my, into my temple. So I just wanted to share with everybody that Corey's <laughs> not so nice <laughs> all the time. But, uh, well, but we, memorable. <laughs> but memorable. <laughs> memorable. <laughs> but he was very helpful in helping me dig that out, so I appreciate him for that. And we love the guys. <laughs> at, we love the guys at Tackle Warehouse. We else. love them, guys, and they <laughs> helped us a lot build the brand and helped us a lot with the inspiration for the lures. I want to mention Jeff Hodges really helped me a lot. Excellent. So they're no good guys. Yes, they, they definitely are. And congratulations on win number four and number seven on the European show. That's right. We had a real good run in Europe, so uh, it's been amazing. The last seven years has just been amazing, and it's part to the team and all the inspiration we get from our customers, our partners and everything, and they just love it. So we're really, we're really happy. Uh, well, congratulations. Thank and you Thank you for taking the time, both of you, for being Appreciate here. Appreciate being here. And uh, we're going to be right back. Uh, we're gonna, I can see Seth Fider sitting over there. Everybody's here at iCast. And we're going to be having Mike Iconelli going to be coming doing some of the interviewing and we've got a lot of great guests we're going to be seeing a lot of great new products that have won here at iCast I see Dan Quinn of Rapple of Fame over there and he's got some great products we're going to be talking about here real soon I'm Pete Luzik for Bash University live here at the 2017 iCast we'll be right back Savage Gear see you out there <laughs>